Alright, turn, uh, what turn is it again? Turn 22. This was a bad turn. Uh, let's be straight up. First of all, Atlantis managed to get reinforcements into Comsath, specifically Iceguard. They must have come through the Whirling Sea, where I didn't have scouts. I knew this was a risk. I decided to go ahead with it, but in any case, what happened was, he ended up with a nice, solid line of about 60 Ice Guard in front. And the Ice Guard, because it's very cold, have Prot 22, which makes them very hard to kill. So my center group got completely hung up on them. My flanking groups did get around and into the Crossbowmen and the Commanders, but between the Skeleton Summons and the Ice Guard completely destroying my center, they were not able to quite seal the deal. A few of the enemy mages, two of the enemy mages survived, one with one hit point and one with three hit points. Another round of attacks, and they probably would have made it, but unfortunately they just didn't, uh, they just didn't quite accomplish what they needed to accomplish. So, I lost in Comsap. I lost 43 horsemen, one ancestor smith, um, I killed 45 of the enemy units, about half of the crossbows, plus, like, most of their commanders. Like I said, one more round of attacks, and I probably would have broken the Atlantean forces. I might still not have won, funnily enough, because the routing Ice Guard would have run back into my Barbarian Heavy Horse. But, ah well. It was close, but I lost. Lost fair and square. So that's fine. Then, I was actually attacked in Strongdale. I had anticipated being attacked in Strongdale. I had not anticipated the force of the counterattack. And this one, so, the fight against Atlantis, that could easily have gone my way even with the extra reinforcements. I don't regret that. I do regret this, because this was a big goof of my own making. I had all these Ancestor Smiths back here some, set up to summon ghosts, right? And they would summon a trickle of ghosts that I would then bless with the Thunder Weapons Bless and all that. Well, so Midgard, Jackalore, did exactly the thing that Midgard does really well that I should have planned against, which was, he sent a whole bunch of Galdermen and had them all summon air elementals at me. Air Elementals, of course, are immune to shock damage, and they're huge, and they trample, and they're very, very hard to kill. So, um, he summoned a bunch of Air Elementals, he threw some Thunder Strikes around, and the Air Elementals mostly demolished my lines in no time flat. And then, of course, my fatigued out Ancestor Smiths were slaughtered. So, this was Jackalore playing well, and me playing badly. Uh, and so I got annihilated for almost no losses. I lost five Ancestor Smiths, which is a pretty big blow, plus my Master of the Way, and all of my cavalry units. Now, in Lupia, Man attacked Midgard, and then I <laughs> I swept in and took over their, uh, their province they had just captured, which is hilarious. But uh, in any case, so I've taken that. That said, this, I, once again, I'm kind of in this situation where, like, this army can't survive uh, being hammered by... Air Elementals. So, first of all, Panlong is going to get out of there. Secondly, these guys are just going to just gonna be on attack. They're just going to charge right in um, and hope that the Air Elementals that are summoned target someone else, basically. Uh, we've got Patala coming in with Mercenaries. Yeah, they've got the Shipwreckers, so they're attacking. We've got uh, Agartha besieging this fort. Uh, we've got single Goldermen wandering around, kind of trying to hold things down. He's Jackalore has gathered a bunch of Goldermen there as well. Now, Jackalore is in really bad shape. Uh, and, of course, we've got a massive Satisian army marching up that he absolutely has to pay attention to. So, Jackalore is in bad shape. Um, he's not having fun, and he is going to lose, eventually. But in the process, he might still be able to do a whole bunch of damage. I've got Ford Prefect over here. Uh, Ford Prefect is going to run away, as is Yenbo Wang. Uh, we're going to recruit some more cavalry here. We'll retake Strongdale pretty soon. Uh, I'm shifting my, my recruitment priorities for mages. I'm starting to recruit more Ancestor Guides, because Air Magic is a decent counter for Air Magic, funnily enough. And having Death 2 mages to cast, like, Death Spells would also be pretty good. If I could grab Enchantment level 5, those guys would be competent Skele Spammers. Um, so overall, I haven't actually gained anything this turn, and I've lost about 100 units all told. It's a pretty significant blow, but it's not a game-ending blow by any means. And if I can pretty much, like... What I want, ideally, is for Jackalore to fight this army and lose a bunch of mages and troops doing it, which I think might be doable. Now, this army is primarily Desert Rangers, and if we look at Satis, Desert Rangers are his Wasteland recruit units. They have Javelins, Falchions, pretty decent armor. They're solid units overall. They're not, like, amazing, but they're pretty solid. So, decent Chaff units. That's the vast majority of this army. Uh, he's also got a bunch of other units in there, including Long Dead and Long Dead of Satis. I don't know what his Mage Core is. 
Um, although I did actually see that army, so yes, I do. Okay, so he's brought four Sorrowmancers, six Keepers of the Tombs, and two Reborn. Interesting. I wonder what they're casting. And yeah, it's mainly Desert Rangers. He does have, or he did at least have a number of Tomb Chariots. Okay, so he's throwing Banefire Darts. Which aren't a terrible idea, considering that a lot of his troops are undead. But, uh... Hmm. Banefire Darts aren't super efficient, but, I mean, his Keepers of the Tombs can just throw them for practically no cost, so... I guess that works. This is the kind of army that could potentially grind its way through a whole bunch of air elementals, and of course, in destroying my army, he did just blow 21 air gems. So, depending on what his income is, that could have been fairly significant. In any case, we're pretty much just uh, going quiescent for a moment. I basically have to move here or here. Um, right now, I'm actually going to duck this army over to... ay 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 If I double back, I risk being sandwiched. But that might be the thing to do. This is Icti of Warriors. He could send some mages. I'm actually going to double back because... The other, I only have three options, right? This army might be destroyed no matter what I do, but at least with the instant attack rear setting, they should cause some damage. And, uh, you know, we'll just see what happens. So basically, it's going to be a, a small turn of mostly consolidation. I'm not doing a whole lot uh, right now, to be totally honest. I am building a temple, I'm recruiting mages. Like I said, my mage recruitment is including more ancestor guides now, and I'm recruiting a few more cavalry to bulk up the numbers a little bit. Uh, but other than that, that's about uh, all I got going on. So, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in turn 23. Okay, turn 23. So, Midgard has moved in and besieged Northia, which was probably the correct move for him. It's not clear where he intends to go after this, but uh, I am breaking the siege. And I'm doing so in a much more focused way magically. So, first of all, I've got these two guys throwing Maws of the Earth. That won't stop his Galdermen, but it will stop his, uh, his Einhears. His Einherz should be significantly discomfited by that. And what I'm doing is, I'm putting up uh, formations of archers in front that are designed to uh, basically absorb lightning strikes, absorb thunder strike, because when he attacked me in Northia, he didn't have any more air gems. His Galdermen were scripted to just thunder strike right off the bat. So unless he's playing a double bluff where he has another hidden scout, uh, loaded with air gems to reload them, which I don't think he is. He could be, but I think it's unlikely. Um, he won't be able to summon air elementals at me again. He'll just be throwing thunder strikes, which is fine. I mean, not fine. It's not great, but it's okay. Um, because I have Legong coming back. So Legong's cavalry are arranged in a line formation, so they're relatively not great targets, low HP density per square. His archers are going to be in a box formation up front, along with this other box of archers that are up front. Uh, and they're going to be basically baiting the thunder strikes. They're going to be closer, so they're easier to hit. They'll be in box formation, so they'll take more damage. Uh, he should, hopefully, throw his thunder strikes at them. Meanwhile, I have these three guys. They're up front. They cast Maws of the Earth twice, and then actually I'm going to tell them to retreat. Uh, now, Maws of the Earth requires them to burn gems to cast it. But... Uh, they can throw it twice, and then they'll basically go to sleep a little bit. I'm hoping, and this is just a hope, of course, but I'm hoping that the Maws will effectively stymie the Einherin, the Einhears, so they won't be able to come murder the Ancestor Smiths. But if they do murder the Ancestor Smiths, that will be okay. Losing three Ancestor Smiths in this battle would not be the end of the world. <clears throat> Meanwhile, on the north and south, of course, we have lines of cavalry. They're going to be charging around the back, and just to add to the confusion... We also have Panlong, who is going to be breaking siege, and Panlong is going to summon lesser air elementals. So those guys will jump into the back and start beating up the Galdermen. Uh, and that should help de sort of distract them, derange them, and prevent them from throwing quite as many thunder strikes as they want to. Uh, I believe this army can win the fight. Even if it can't win the fight, I think this army will kill a significant number of their Galdermen and prevent them from doing any real siege damage to the fortress. Uh, which right now they're doing like 50 per turn. So, yeah, not even 50 per turn. So, uh, to be honest, I pretty much expect this army to go somewhere else. And where exactly, I don't know. It might double back towards Wick. If it doubles back towards Wick, then it will run into this force, 
and I may still be able to kill off a bunch of the Galdermen, I'm not certain. He doesn't seem to have enough Einheers to really guard his Galdermen from being charged by cavalry, so that would be a very RNG-heavy fight, where it would kind of depend on where the Einheers went and what the Galdermen did if the Galdermen managed to land good Thunderstrike shots on cavalry coming towards them, and he could probably expect to lose a couple of mages. But we'll just kind of kind of see when the time comes. This is a very powerful throne, incidentally. So, I'm also gathering troops. Uh, I'm at peace with pretty much everyone else, including Man. Although, right now, Man is getting fucking owned by independent attacks. They've lost three provinces to independence, haven't taken any of them back that I can see. Right now, their visible armies are here and here. And I suspect that's probably the majority of what they've got. Um, there's a lot of wardens there. There's a lot of tower knights, defenders. I think that's most of their troops. Um, I don't see a lot of troops anywhere else. I don't have eyes everywhere, obviously. But I don't see a lot of troops in Man. It looks like he's recruiting wardens steadily out of Man. I don't see a lot of troops down here in Glistening Wood. He might have an army in Centania, I'm not sure. But might be worthwhile to start gearing up for a strike on Man, although we would have to end our non-aggression pact in order to do that. But I'm at the point where I, I have pretty decent magic. I have Alteration level 5. Um, so I can throw Maws, I can throw down Wooden Warriors. Um, I'm working on Conjuration level 5 and should be there in a couple turns, so I'll be able to throw full-size Elementals. So that might be the time to go in. Um, the next step will be to grab Enchantment down to, like, level... Probably I would want level 5 so I could throw Thunder Ward up. But uh, anyway, we'll see. In the meantime, however, I have some other stuff I want to set up. I want to get at least one guy casting Dark Knowledge... On, a, on the regular. I don't know why he's throwing it at Wick, but okay, we can start there. Uh, no, actually, don't start there. So start Dark Knowledge, right? Uh, yeah, Faldenberg, sure. So let's throw some Dark Knowledge around, try and get some, uh, some more of them, and let's also throw around some... Uh, no, don't I have no more? I thought I had no more. Uh, what's my other... I have Voice of Apsu. Which would be great, except I don't have any water gems and I have no water gem income. So I'll have to alchemize some in order to get that going. Uh, might be worthwhile, though, because I do have some water two mages. So I'll tell you what, just speculatively, I'm going to alchemize up, say, 12 water gems, burning a whole bunch of pearls to do that. And I'm going to cast Voice of Apsu, you know, like six times, and just see what I can find. Um, Sholau here has a little grip of cavalry. So he's going to set off in this direction, likewise Yi T is going to meet him. So we'll have another group of about 50 Barbarian Heavy Horse ready to go into Northia if we don't manage to beat them, or if they come into this province, we'll have 50 Barbarian Heavy Horse to meet them. Oh, uh, nope, I didn't want to do that. So these guys will be in, yeah, and they're in skirmish formation, so they'll be relatively less vulnerable to uh, Thunder. So these guys are going to attack closest, those guys are going to attack rear. Actually, the attack rear guys should be slightly behind so that the attack closest guys attract the attentions of the Einheers first. And the Thunderbolts. So that'll be the plan there, and um, do we have... Yeah, that's about all. In fact, I might... Uh, Okay, I think that's going to be the turn. So, yep, that's it. Hopefully we'll be able, I think we're going to be able to drive this Midgard army back, retake Strongdale, and hold on to these two provinces, which is something, I guess. It's not a whole lot, but it's something. Uh, Satis looks like they're pushing straight for Midgard, so I'm not sure what's going to happen here. There may be a climactic confrontation between mostly Galdermen and this army of Satis right in Midgard, and if so, then I might be poised to sweep in behind and do some damage, but we'll see what happens. In any case, that's turn 23. And I'll see you in turn 24.
Okay, turn 25. So, this turn, uh, Midgard pulled back to their capital, as I kind of expected. Satis did not engage. Their army is going around conquering more provinces, which is, you know, fine. Um, they have more troops coming up, including a bunch more Sauromancers, so I think they're waiting for reinforcements before they go in against Midgard itself. I'm cleaning up the Barbarians that attacked Northia and some Earth Elementals over here. But not a whole lot of action is happening this turn. So here's the interesting thing. I remembered... Um... This game is, this tournament is actually using Lucid's thematic Gem Gen mod, which I've never used before, as well as the improved casting AI, which I haven't really noticed, but I believe it's there. Um, so that means that there should be forgeable items at like levels four or six that I can forge that will give me consistent, you know, gems per turn in combat. Um, now I don't, my gem income right now is pretty garbage, uh, four, seven, Eight, nine, twelve gems per turn. Not great. I'm working to help that by casting a bunch of dark knowledge and stuff, but still, not not great. Voice of Apsu, etc. Um, gonna be running out, running low on gems. So having gem gens, uh, in the field would be very, very valuable for me. The other thing that I've remembered. This is something that I should have been thinking about beforehand, but. When I took a step back and looked at the situation strategically, I realized what I need to do is not spread my research out as much as I was thinking I was gonna. I need to just go to Conjuration 7 um, and get Wrath of the Ancestors and start casting it because I have a lot of mages that can cast this spell and I have the ability with just the ast even just the astral randoms that I have presently, I have the ability to form, you know, small communions to let my priests communion up to uh to throw down divine blessing and if i can throw down divine blessing after i've summoned like a hundred or 150 ancestor spirits uh a lot of battle problems are solved by that not all but a lot now the problem is 150 ancestor spirits requires that i cast wrath of the ancestors seven times which means seven death gems unless i have gem gens that i'm using in battle continuously or fairly commonly Horde Prefect here, incidentally, is going to go back up to the capital to pick up some troops. I am recruiting a whole bunch more troops. I'm not going to recruit the Ancestor Vessels. They're too expensive. And I, they're expensive and I don't need them. I'd rather have larger numbers of normal soldiers. So I need to keep recruiting Masters of the Way, just because Masters of the Way are a cheap way to fish out the Astral Randoms. 25% of them are Astral 1, and can thus serve as Communion Slaves. And in addition, of course, I still need to keep recruiting my Ancestor Guides and Ancestor Smiths for the Earth Magic and the Death Magic. So right now, I'm just retaking this province. I'm going to retake Wick, and so I'll end up with at least a couple provinces out of this. We will see how the Satis versus Midgard fight works. Um, if Satis manages to take Midgard out, then great. You know, fantastic. They can have Midgard, I guess. We'll see if there's a, a chance to attack them. They are, geographically speaking, extremely stretched. If we look at here, Satis has actually very few provinces near their capital. Um, but then they go all the way down this way, and they go up this way. In terms of total province count, this has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 provinces, I believe, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, they have 12 provinces. So they're not actually large. They're not large. They're not rich. This, I would be willing to bet, is almost the entirety of their army. So it's possible that I'll be able to just kind of wait and let them take out Midgard and suffer all the casualties and then swoop in and snipe them. Um, and that would be nice. It would be cool if that happened. Over here, it looks like Agartha is managing to hold out against Ulm, but possibly not for long. Ulm is looking fairly strong. But so far, so far, I don't think anyone is really in a dominant position. I mean, Man is doing well. I'm doing okay, not great. Uh, Ulm is doing well. Atlantis is doing well. Uh, Patala seems to be doing pretty solidly as well. So Patala's in a decent shape. I actually have not seen Patala's capital. So if Patala owns most of this area, then they might be doing extremely well. They might be the, uh, the game leader, but I don't know that because I don't have eyes in that area very deep yet. But in any case, so yeah, like I said, I just need to concentrate a little bit more. I am going to grab Evocation level 3 because that gives me Mist um, and Arcane Probing and Magic Duel. Uh, and then I'm going to go down to Conjuration level 7, and then we'll grab Construction uh, and Enchantment. After that, Enchantment level 5 will probably be what we do. But first we, need the enchant first we need the Conjuration, and then we need Construction to see if we can get a Death Temporary Gem Gen. I don't actually know if there's one in, the in here, 
because I have not played with Lucid's thematic gem gen mod. Um, her bow does not need to be standing here. He can come up there. And we have a whole bunch of scouts sneaking through. Let's see if we can get a scout over to this area. It's kind of a long shot, but uh, we'll try. So that is the turn, and I'll see y'all in turn 26.